Good afternoon, everybody. Um, after a long, long time, I'm coming back to my YouTube channel. So today I have got Jaren with me. Good evening, Jaren. Hello, Andy. How are you? I'm good. You? Good. I'm fine. Thank you. So today I've got Jaren. Jaren is at the moment doing his pre um, uh in Sunderland. Um, so Jaren today is with me to speak about Oriel. Uh, before I speak, uh, go to Jaren, I wanted to clarify a couple of things what I've been asked to me a couple of times in the last few weeks for me. Um, I was planning to do a video about it, but I really didn't get any time. So the first one was whether I could do an OSPAP in PG, in PG diploma or MSc. Till last year, international students were allowed to do only OSPAP at MSc level, at the MSc OSPAP. OSPAP is basically a transition from the international pharmacy to over to this UK. So it doesn't mean that you are getting an M farm. It doesn't mean that. It's just you have for a for your visa purpose. At, till last year, it was done on an M. The international students could only do it at the MSc level. But this year, what they have decided is the international students also can do the. OSPAP at PG diploma. So that means you can finish your um, OSPAP in nine months. So by doing the PG in PG diploma, you, know, you could finish in OSPAP in nine months. You could also bring your family when, you know, your husband or children along with it. But the only thing is that you would not get a post-work visa because it's a nine-month course. So you won't get a post-work visa. But OSP, for OSPAP, you don't need a, uh, as I told to many of my students who have been contacting me, you don't need a post-work visa because when you're getting an admission to OSPAP in the next two, like for example, if you're coming to, for a OSPAP in September, by, by November, December, you're already getting a place for your pre-reg placement. And your pre-reg placement, you're applying it to the tier two visa. So that's why you don't need your OSPAP, you don't need your PSW at that time. So pre-reg placement is normally given on a one-year visa or two-year visa or three-year visa, depending upon your employers. So you can negotiate with your employers. Um, what is a good thing of uh, staying on a pre-reg place on a tier two visa is that when you apply for a PR, the tier two visa the years from the tier two visa is calculated. Whereas when you, if you do on a PSW, the years on your PSW is not calculated for your PR. So I just wanted to make it clear before I go and have a chat with Jaren. Sorry, Jaren, I'm very sorry. I thought I, I should have made another video, but I didn't really get a time. All right. Okay. So Jaren, uh, today's our talk is about pre oriel So can you tell me what is oriel so Oreo is a recruitment system used by Health Education England. So it used to be traditionally used by, you know, for medics after they finished their graduation. That's what they used for foundation year and I think similar for dentists as well. Okay. So the pharmacy graduation, after after you graduate your M Pharm degree, the Health Education England started using Oreo to recruit pre-reg trainees. Okay. So what happens is it's like a national system where all the employers put, they express their interest to go on Oreo. Some employers choose not to go on Oreo, but majority okay. of the training providers choose to go to go through Oreo because of GP placements. Okay. Uh, if you want to do a placement in GP or hospital, you would have to go through Oreo. But okay. certain companies and small chain pharmacies can you can still apply for pre-reg by like independently using their online portal. Okay. But Oreo is like the national system, so you, there's no no one has any preference. It just depends on how you do on your tests. So your situational judgment test and your numeracy test. So everyone's treated fairly. So if you know someone at the management or not, as long as you do well in your test and your ranking's fine, you get through Oreo and you get a place you want. Okay, that's good. So when, which month do, does it start? You start applying uh, for it? So you can apply around the start of June. That's when you register online through the Oreo website. Okay. So you need to give all your personal information, your qualifications, and I think at the end, you need to provide two references. Okay. I think one could be personal and one could be academic. Okay. And then once you put all your information, you're registered through Oreo. And then there's preference, there's different windows that open throughout the month of June. So I think there's a preferencing window and then there's a window opens showing you all the employers that's available for the upcoming year. 
Yeah. So once you once you once you register, you get a login and you get all your details, and then Oreo starts emailing you every two or three weeks, letting you know all the important dates that's coming up. So every two weeks, I would just if you're registering through Oreo, I would recommend checking your email regularly because they always send updates about new employers, any up upcoming changes or any changes they're going to make to the system. Because mm -hmm. obviously, because it's a national system and with the pandemic going on, they're always making changes to the dates and stuff like that. Okay. So they email you any updates and you apply at the start of June and then there's preferencing window that ha happens throughout. Okay, so for my OSPAP students, can I just tell you that if you finish your processing of your GPHC registration and you get to university, you have to get a, your university selected before you apply for your OSPA, uh, for your Oriel system. So as, I, as Jarin said, the Oriel opens up in the first week of June. So by the time you should always, you should get your um, university because when you're applying for it, they will ask you which university you have got for OSPA and they need a proof of that. And also your proof of your GPSC registration, like registration. So that proof is needed to apply for you um, for your uh, Oriel system. So um, when you said about there are there is an exam, what what type of exams um, is is it calculations and what else? Uh, there's nothing clinical on the exam, so you're not meant expected to know anything clinically. Yeah. So you don't have to revive, prepare for it, any clinical no dosing or anything like that. All okay. the information needed for the test is given as a document within this. It happens at the Pearson Center, so it's all okay. online. It's so all. you go to a Pearson Center and there's a situational judgment test and that contains 52 questions. Okay. And I think you get around two minutes per question. So in total, you get 104 minutes for the situational judgment test and 15 minutes for the numeracy test. Okay. And that's for 10 questions. Okay, so when we'll first think about a numeracy test. So when you go into numeracy test, is it more of a calculations, drug calculations or drug conversions? Uh, so there's a few topics they expect you to know. And those are like simple pharmaceutical calculations. And most people when they're on the M Pharm degree will have gone through many, most of it. And you probably would be able to do it pretty straightforward. But I think the hardest bit I found was doing it within the time frame they give you you're under exam stress and you're in a new setting in a new small Pearson center so you find it really hard to like get yourself organized and manage to finish it in time but the there's a uh, H health health education england releases a document at the start of the year so you know when you apply through oreo there's a handbook that's released by health education england uh, telling you all the topics there will be covering through the numeracy test and the situational judgment test so they will give you guidance on what sort of things you need to revise for the exam. Uh, from as far as I remember, you don't need to learn anything like, you know, kidney, kidney filtration rates or anything complicated. It's usually dilutions, dosage regimens, and calculating the days of supply. So something could be an example of a patient comes in for prednisolone tablets and he's prescribed five milligrams on seven for seven days. Then the, the week after he's prescribed 14 tablets so you just have to make sure that you add up properly according to the dosage regimens and just make sure you can't uh, calculate the quantity of supply. And something else will be converting be between doses. So uh, a prescription could, they will say you receive a prescription for a child weighing 16 kilograms and they're prescribed 2.5 milligrams of something per kilogram four times a day. And then you need to give that as a solution. But they will give you all the conversion, like information required for the question within that. It's just you should be able to convert between the two doses and the two formulations. But it's just if you practice it, you can actually, it's, it's actually doable. Uh, it's just making sure that you work through it logically and within the time frame they give you. But I think you can find um, practice questions online. So if you just type in um, Oreo pre-reg numeracy test practice questions, you can find it. Or most universities will have pharmaceutical calculations booklet. So when I went to uni, every year we had to do a calculations exam. As a part of that, they always have booklets just on the online portal. You can just download and practice questions whenever you want. But if, if you can't access that, you could just access it online. I think something called a website called Lace Pharmacy do release questions, practice questions for the situational judgment test and the numeracy test nearer to the time. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Jaren. That was a good information. So, um, so you wrote your exams. 
And then for OSPAP students, uh, I think you come down in September and in the first week, I think it is in the last week of September and the second week, third week and the last week of September and the first week of October. During that time is the time when the last year children, um, students got their dates and they did the exam. So in, in if you're coming for Sunderland University, I think they got it down that the exam center was in Newcastle. Um, so that's there's an exam center called Pearson Center where they do co and write the exams in. Okay, so you get your results by the first week of uh, second week of October, or is that right? Or third week of? I think it's to work well for me. I think my I got mine because I did mine during the first year of lockdown and stuff. So okay. my dates were pushed further back, and I didn't have the MMI. Usually, in normal circumstances, you are meant to have. MMIs, which are like mini multiple interviews, but currently speaking, the mini uh, MMIs are cancelled, and all the rankings are based off the situational judgment test and the numeracy test. But usually, it's around end of October or beginning of November you start okay. getting your offers. Yeah. But the offers come in like three waves, I think. So the first set of offers, uh, come let's say just comes on the first week of November, and the four, ten days after they will release the second set of offers, and the third week after they will probably say. They should state you in the email all the dates and all the offers, the offers they, they're going to release the offers on. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jaren. So as Jaren said previously, first, like when you're applying for it after the week, two week, few weeks later, they'll send you all the list of people, list of the pharmacies and list of hospitals who are in the oral system. And then you can categorize yourself like the most preference places where you want it, the less preference places you want it, and the places where you don't want to go at all. Um, as a um, thingy advice, what majority of the students, what they do, because they needed, people who are coming for an OSPAP here, they needed a tie to visa also. What they, they say is that don't be too stingy. Um, try to tick as much as possible where you can go wherever you want it, because that's one year you can go and work in wherever you want it. If you didn't, if you didn't need a visa, then you can be like, you know, you can specialize and you can specific and say that I would like only so and so place. But otherwise, you can just, you know, open minded, you can go anywhere and work. That should be that way of motive. And certain places where you don't want to go, just put that as known, none and everything else. You can just take it. And by by October and no, end of November or first week of no, end of November, when you get the results, at, as uh, Jerin said, that you would be given the first option where you can they'll give you the offer, and if you didn't like it, you can you know decline the offer. They will give you the second offer, and then another thing, you are getting three offers, isn't that Jerin? Is that right? Yeah, there's the three set of offers I think they released. So. Uh, first set of offers, they, you, most of the people get their first set of offers and then they ask you, do you want to accept the offer? And then you can prefer op, opt to accept the offer and to go for something above your list. So let's just say I put hospital as my number one choice, but I've got my second choice hospital. Yeah. If I want to keep that place, but want to go up for the option one, I could accept that place and then just say, wish, I wish my interest to keep, my, keep me on the list. So if someone drops out or someone declines their offer for my number one choice, I get moved up. Okay. But some people can reject the choice completely and still wait for their desired choice. Okay. Or some people just accept the offer anyway. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. So uh, once you offered the um, accepted the offer, what does happen after that? So once accepted the offer, Oreo comes up, kind of confirms you via an email saying your offer has been accepted and it states all the information about your employer and their contact details. And Oreo recommends that you give them a couple of months for them to contact you directly. So either if it's a big pharmacy, uh, their superintendent pharmacist or one of the HR team will get in touch with you usually, okay. uh, usually via email, and they will tell you what sort of processes that you need to go through. But I think the first thing they will ask for is a DBS, which you have to complete, and then they will let you know how they work. But for some of my friends that went in to do hospital training, uh, they the hospital trust got in touch with them quite early on because I think because when you have to go into hospitals, they have to do a certain amount of training and stuff like that before they start the employment. So the hospitals got them in and had an induction day around March. So, but I think Oreo recommends if you don't hear anything back from your employer and it's being confirmed that you have a place, 
you're recommended to get in touch with them by March just okay. to see if everything's okay and if they know that you're coming in July and so they can start doing the paperwork. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add on, um, Jaren? Um, what I would say is, like um, Sheen Andy said, there's like three options, preference, not preferred. I mean, no preference and not preferred at all. Uh, it's just that if you put something in no preference, that means if you don't get any of your preferred choice, they can still give you an offer on the no preference, like the one in the middle. And if you put a place down you really don't want to go to or an employer you don't want to work for at all, I wouldn't recommend putting it there because you might be you might get an offer and you might not get any something else that you really wanted and you might have to end up going there. And before you apply for put a preference down, I would look at the employer and see if they had pre-regist before and what sort of training options they provide. Because um, uh, Health Education England really want to promote split training programs. So that's what I'm currently doing is nine months in community and three months in GP, but they want to increase the number of placements that's split training. So there's options where you could do three months in community, three months in GP and three months in hospital. So it just gives you a better understanding of what each sector is like. So you can make a better choice once you qualify as a pharmacist. And obviously, because there's an increased number of GP placements, I recommend making sure what sort of training offers they offer. And obviously, I think most employers are required to enroll you on a training program at a local college, because I go to Sunderland University for my training program, see if they offer that, and what sort of working hours you have to do. And obviously, if it's close to home or if it's far away from, you just have to consider those things as well before you make a choice rather than just purely just based on salary itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, for the OSPAP students, uh, don't get disheartened if you didn't complete your GPSC registration by April, May, June, May, because even if you have not got, couldn't get through the, get into Oriel to get into register for Oriel, uh, people who have come here have already got a place for pre-reg. Uh, through other, you know, through the external sources. So, you know, you still wouldn't get it if you have not, if you thought that you are applied late for your GPSC registration and you didn't complete the process by uh, end of May. Um, so then don't worry about it. All the children who are here, all the students who came to UK into Sunderland University, everyone has got a place for or a, a pre-reg placement for next year. Um, half of them has couldn't apply through the Oriel because they their processing was delayed. So still everybody managed to get a place for the pre-reg placement and everybody has got it through the Zatire 2 visa program. So don't get disheartened if you didn't get it. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jaren. Thanks a lot. I know it was a short notice, but thank you very much for coming for the video. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.